One of the biggest misconceptions is that with age comes wisdom. Um, you know, it seemed quite obvious. You'd think that it is, and it's not the case at all. With age should come wisdom. With age isn't guaranteed wisdom at all. I've witnessed elderly people, people who have been through an awful lot in their life, not learn a damn thing. And I'm quite bemused by it, in all honesty. I watch on um, quite horrified because we have our entire lifespan to grow and evolve. I talk about it a lot. The whole point of life really is to evolve from our state of being to the end. We should have grown, should have learned a lot. Um, so literally, um, you go through experiences and it should create wisdom, shouldn't it? Stands to reason. But if you don't learn your lessons, it doesn't make you wise, does it? And the thing is, you only have to look at life in general and those around us. Most people fall in pitfalls of completely repeating cycles, repeating situations. So did, did those people learn the lessons? And if they didn't learn it in middle age, what's to say they're going to make it to old age and learn anything either? So, yeah, with, with age comes wisdom. It's not. It's with experience comes wisdom. If, um, you know, of course, you learn your lessons. So effectively, you could have... You could have someone younger who's been through an awful lot in their life. They could be incredibly wise by the time they're in their um, early adulthood, early 20s. You know, if you, had a, if you had a really intense childhood and you learned an awful lot from those situations, of course you are. You're going to be incredibly wise. But you could have someone who's a far older, feel, act like, feel superior and feel like they're there to guide you. And it's like you probably learn a lot. You'll learn a lot more from the, from the younger person. So you can't just look at someone's age and then just completely make an assumption based off that because it's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've watched, I watch people and, and, I, and I'm absolutely perplexed by it. Um, I don't want to sort of give names away and things, but it's someone I know in, I don't know how old they are, maybe their 70s, I think. And... They never seem to learn. It's like you, like when you're in your early twenties. Let's say you, let's say you really like someone, and they say to you, they, they, they say, you know, you know, I only like you as a friend. It hurts, doesn't it? Because if you're, if you've got an emotional attachment to someone, of course you hope it develops into something else, and you've got a naivety. Maybe you expect things to change, but it doesn't. And that, let's, let's say you've been told repeatedly, like this isn't going to happen. I only want you as a friend. Otherwise, we can't be friends. So then maybe you say, I, I can be friends. I can be friends. It's naive on both sides, you know. If the other one person should have learned that that person can't be friends, clearly because they've everything indicated and shown that that's not what they want. So, you know, it's best to let it go. And the one obviously that can't be that, that can't get on really on board with just being friends needs to understand that person's never going to truly love them in the way they want to be loved anyway. So, effectively, I think personally, and this is within my own life, from my own experience, of course. If I've got an attraction, physical, if I've got a, a romantic attraction to someone and it's not going to develop into a relationship, I personally step away. Like, that's not a relationship. Unfortunately, that's not a friendship that can be. Now, it's sad in a sense, isn't it? Because if it's no one's fault, you're attracted. But it's just, for me, it's just, you have to draw a line somewhere because it's not fair for them. It's not fair for if they're in a relationship. And it's also if you end up in a relationship yourself, it's like, that's, that's not fair on that person. You know, it's not to say you would prefer to be with the other person, but it's not fair for there to be any chemistry when you're trying to deal with it. When, when it should be, you know, I'm someone who keeps a very small circle anyway, so I don't actually need all that shit. You know, I only want personally, uh, my daughter, uh, my close family, and uh, whoever I'm in a relationship with. I, I'm not someone that wants a wide net. You know, I don't need friends per se. My best friend should be the whoever I'm in a relationship with. That's my best friend. Um, as is my daughter, you know, and I, I, that's how I am. I don't need all that. Um, but the reality is, by the age of 70, you'd think you'd have learned that lesson. If you can't, if something can't be the way it is and you can't accept it, you need to move on. But yet, that person, even at 70 years old, still hopes that things will happen. So they keep digging and digging and digging. I mean, well, it's just stupid. It's like, at what, at what age do you get the message? And there's another person, for instance, I, uh, you know, they're kind people, but, you know, but they're just, their mind's not quite there, you know, it's, it's actually madness. There was someone recently who, like a family friend, 
who, you know, I had to get my car repaired. And they were kind enough to take me to pick the car up, uh, you know, and, and take me home after I, dropped, after I dropped it off at a garage. And I thought that was really nicer than that. But immediately, for instance, I mean, this isn't necessarily wisdom at this point, but you'd think awareness. I consider myself a really good driver because I'm incredibly observant. Like, I'm analytical of everything I do. So even in the car, I can drive fast, but it's not out of control. Whereas I notice some people drive fast and they have no control. It's quite crazy. So I'm calculating everything, even on a slip road to the to uh, the main road. I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at all the different lanes. I can literally analyze every. So I'm I'm looking at the speed the other vehicles are going out on the inside lane where I need to obviously merge. There's no point in me just putting my foot foot down and it, and then you're going to clash with the car with the vehicles or a lot of lorry car or whatever. That doesn't make sense. How how is you how have you gained anything in the fact that you're going to have to brake heavily at the end? It's stupid. So. You, you time it and you start to match the speed and you start to figure it. And then naturally you do that and you're always watching the outside lane. So effectively you can get out there quite quick. It's all calculated decisions, you know, it's, it's, it's smart. And, and I say, I watch other drivers who don't do anything like that. And they just think they, they just think pammering their foot down is the answer. So anyway, this person's come out. I saw this run out. They were just literally running on the pavement. And they, weirdly enough, they had these lights on the back and front of them. I thought, you know, that's mental. But of course, safety is important. So you'd think with something like that, anyone would see him a mile off. I believe well did. And it was literally just coming out the driveway. And I was like, well, well, you know, thinking they'd see. They still didn't see. And in the end, this guy had to just stop right by the car. Like, you could see he was a bit annoyed. And I thought, you had every right to be annoyed. That was pathetic. I saw you. I saw that person miles away. And I was shocked they didn't even stop at the end. Like, the awareness was ridiculous. That person's incredibly older than me. But there's their, aware, their spatial awareness of anything is not even there they couldn't concentrate on two things at once so they can't talk and drive that's their limitation in the end i just stopped talking so much in the car they were laughing because i was saying things that were funny but in the end i was like i ain't even talking because this is risky as shit um drove through they drove straight through a red light <laughs> and i thought what on earth was happening here we just had this incident we've had that incident there was um an amazon van coming out of um a side road actually there's quite a few and we we're stuck in a bit of traffic my my rule of thumb personally when I'm stuck in traffic is um like let one go at a time. So one goes, you go. One go, you go. Let the let everything filter in. There's no point being an asshole. It doesn't it doesn't make your day much longer to let a let a vehicle out and you make it their day easier. So I just don't understand the need to be a dipshit. Um but I weren't driving and it weren't for me to make a statement, so I just let them do, but they what? But they made it so difficult, it was unreal. And the van nearly hit him in the end because the van was trying to come out and it didn't let him. And uh, yeah, she's actually in in the car herself. She's quite aggressive, and I thought you nutter. Um, because she said, "I'm not putting up with that." They want to see me angry, but I thought you've got disabilities and things. So you're not. What would you be able to do if they were angry? You've just set yourself up for a situation that you actually wouldn't be able to handle if it escalated. And what's the point of it escalating? You know, it's all these little things, but it's like. Obviously, to each their own, but I'm not of the ilk anymore. Like I say anymore, because I was a bit more, um, a bit fiery when I drive, really. I used to get really heated up. Now, I, now I'm far more passive. I'm far more like chilled because I don't see the point of stress. It's all about my own stress levels. Uh, and and I'm, I, have, I have kindness for people, you know? So like, I can't help but think if I leave that person stuck there, how long are they going to be stuck there? Why make their day extended? Who want, you know, let's let them get on with their day. I'm not here to make their life hard, you know? So just go. And then, um, like, for instance, when I'm turning off of the of the main road or something, and let's say it's like, you know there's going to be traffic. And in the past, like, most, like a lot of people do, you would go as far as you can on the main road and try to turn off as late as you can and, and try to cut into the uh, the line. You know, everyone's done it. I don't do that anymore. I can't even be asked. If I know the traffic, if I know there's going to be a queue, I just, I, just, I just slot in. I can't be asked of it. It's more relaxing. It's weirdly enough, you know, you're going to be there a bit, little bit longer, maybe a minute. But it's a minute of just relaxed. I ain't, got, I ain't getting a headache. If you miss that turn and you can't make it in, so either you have to be aggressive or you're going to end up missing your turn. And then you're going to have a, an extended drive to the next turn off. It's just so pointless. Just getting queue, you, you know you're fine. Um, I know it's all driving at this point, but that's just, it's just a couple of people that I've witnessed. And of course, I've seen other people do other things. And, and I say, I think sometimes like what we look like it, it, people will be confused they how it, it's surprised you've been through what you've been through and um, have you how you present yourself you wouldn't assume they've been someone's been through that but like i said in another video for someone to 
maybe have a lot of wisdom, have intelligence. It's like maybe consider they've probably been through something to to have gained that. You don't just or you don't just naturally have um, wisdom with societal issues. You know, you, you gain that over time through experiences. Um, yeah, but anyway, like I say, I wouldn't just naturally gravitate to the fact that um, just because someone's older, they they are wiser. That's so not true. I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet my life on someone older being 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 wise. If anything, you just got to look at. Um, I think the eras people come through of uh, it says a lot for the most part. No, not for everyone because there will be some wise older people, but then there's also wise younger people. Um. But it comes from, a, I think, personally, obviously, this generation of el- the elderly, they come from a period where um, sort of smoking and drinking and things were prevalent. And it's just a lifestyle that was just different to the way our lifestyles are, isn't it? And the, the way they raise children, the way they do things, it isn't always in alignment with, with where it is today. So I think their opinions can be quite harsh. Their opinions can be quite harsh, but not, you don't necessarily have to agree with it. And, and that's where I'm at. I don't, I rarely agree. I rarely agree because I've got my own opinions on things. And, and of course, I feel I'm right. <laughs> and, and yeah, so I'm quite headstrong. But yeah, I'm not a stupid person. So I don't really, um, I, don't, I actually don't believe at all that most elderly people are wise. I think most elderly people, are the same as any typical 30, 40 year old. I think there's reached a point where people just, a lot of people just stop learning. They do. They just stop learning. There's going to be some, look, there's, there's remarkable people in their 30s, 40s, 20s, and there's going to be remarkable people that are older. But there's also going to be dipshits in the 20s, 30s, and dipshits in the older. It's just the way it is. They don't learn the lessons. I don't want to put a lifestyle choice on people and, and make it a huge thing about that. But you get people that have made bad decisions all their life and they hide behind it saying they had no choice. Yet that's just a that's just a loser's mentality. We always have a choice. If you I'm not gonna go a huge lifestyle choice on this because I've done it in other videos. But if you're gonna make a decision to pursue something and it comes at the cost of your time, your freedom and relationships and whatever, because you thought that chasing something else was worth it and that risk was worth the reward then that's a decision. You can't hide behind it and say, I had no choice. It's like everybody has a choice. You can be poor and have love around you or you can be rich and have nothing. That's a choice. So, you know, when I hear people say like they had to do this job, they had to work all these hours, they had to work 60 hours a week, had to do all that. it's like bullshit. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to do any of that. You chose to do that. So don't expect sympathy for it. You know, just accept the life you lived. Everything's a choice. You can take less pay. You can work closer to home. You can pick the hours you choose. I live like that. I do what I want. A lot of time, my my life financially is harder because I t- I choose freedom. Because I make my own decisions, and guess what? I stand by it. I don't make excuses. I don't say it's someone else's fault that I struggle. But I own it with a badge of honor to say I do it on my terms. I live life on my terms. Everybody else has the same freedom to do the same thing. So when I hear someone make excuses um, as to why their life was like this and their life was like that, it's like, I don't give a shit because that's just, you're, you're, it's a cop out. It's a cop out. You could do a different thing and life would be hard, just like it is for me. But if you ain't got the balls to take on a challenge and make life hard in that sense, then by all means, hide behind the fact that you had to work over 60 hours, 100 hours a week. Um, yeah, I, I don't listen to that shit because I'm like, I don't, I, you don't, won't get sympathy from me. It, don't, it doesn't. It's like, I, does, I don't doubt the work that was put into it, but I do doubt the fact that they say they had no choice when you could choose everything. You could choose to let, let the material go. But if, you're, if your whole life is dedicated to having physical trophies, having nice things, if that's the barometer of your happiness, then by all means. But if you're miserable at old age, it's like you really didn't make very good decisions, did you? And you didn't really learn too much throughout life to understand that life is quite short, although most people think it's long. And we all have the freedom to make our own decisions and choices. And ultimately, we have to assume responsibility for the results. So if what you're doing today is not yielding the results that you want, then maybe it's wise to make different decisions. And if people close to you can't accept that, sometimes you're going to have to make a decision on that too, aren't you? Do I keep these people with me? Are they aligned with the life I want to live? 
Do you know what I mean? So like, let's say you're in a relationship and you, you love the person, but the person doesn't align with the lifestyle you want to live. So you're having to kick your, you're having to kill yourself effectively to supply a lifestyle they want. What choice do you have? See, most people say I don't have a choice. Of course you don't, because you, you know that so much is expected of me. But then, what do you expect of others? Do you expect them to have compassion for you? Do you expect them to to care about how you feel? Do they expect you to be happy? Because the reality is, if they're not. Why are you giving everything for them? And that's the way it is. So if someone can't get on board, maybe you're not aligned anymore. Maybe you love them, but it's not unconditional because they're not unconditionally loving you. You're having to be a mule to support them and give them the lifestyle they see. Well, that's, again, that's a choice. You can stay in that situation. You can validate it as I have no choice. Or you can say, look, if, you're, if, if this means more to you than me, uh, or my mental health, my well-being, uh, and the vision I see for our future, if our vision is different, then we're going to have to, unfold, you know, I, I can't see any other way to, to end this. Bold decision, of course. But seeking your own happiness surely is far more um, beneficial than sort of living a life where you're miserable, especially by the end. Imagine running out of time and you was miserable. <coughs> what a waste of life. But like I say, I see a lot of people in old age who have made terrible decisions their entire life, and it's like, that is mad to me. You you you, rec you must have recognised that one. But at some point, you're unhappy. At what point did you change anything? Oh, uh, I couldn't. Don't talk crap. Don't talk crap. You can lose everything and start again if you've got the balls. Harsh truths, of course. Um, but I, I I am living embodiment of the fact that I stand. I beat to my own drum. I'm not, I don't have a lot, but I have enough around me. And for that, I have my freedom. And I give myself opportunities to embrace a better life in the future. Um, I, I set the tone for my life. And that's all it is. You know, I could cop out. I could cop out. I could take easy options like other people. I could, make, I could amass plenty of money at, this, at, the, at, the, um, at the behest of everything else. But I just, my morals are too high. I won't do it. I won't sell myself for money. I just won't sell it at all. There's nothing tangible. There's nothing someone can offer me that would deviate me from my purpose, my sense of self, my desires, what I seek for me. And that ain't always material. Of course, we all want things, but not to the detriment of my freedom and choices. So I won't allow someone to dominate me or control me or treat me like a puppet. I'm no one's pet. And I never have been. And so there's usually conflict. And I accept that. Because I can't follow or beat to the drum of a moron. And it's just the way I am. I can't do it. It just drives me to madness. When you've got leaders who are not leaders, but they've been, they're like puppets. And they've been placed there to fit a narrative or agendas. And, it's just like, and then they're trying to tell you what to do. And it's like, my God, man, I can't listen to you. You're an idiot. And I'll tell them straight to their face, you're an idiot. Um, and I've had a lot of problems. <laughs> but it's just the way it is, you know. Sometimes people need harsh truths. But like I say, that you know, I, I, I'm actually, I am in deep shock at the state of the world. And the real problem we got is you've got the elderly who then try to preach and teach to the youth. And the youth look up to the elders, of course, as we should in some ways. Um, but it's up to us to interpret the stories, you know. I think that's what's important. Like the elderly, the elderly can tell you their life story, but it's up to you to interpret it yourself. Maybe recognize where there's been flaws. You know, don't let people hide behind uh, excuses. That's the one thing. Don't let that happen because they will. They'll, they'll tell you a story and they'll make it sound like they had no choice and it was all for this reason. It's like always have a choice. Always have a choice. If all the burden's on you, sometimes you just got to take the burden off you and say that other people have to fend for themselves too. You know, because you have situations like that. People rely on you. But eventually, you've got to let them spread their own wings though and don't take it all on your shoulders, you know. We all deserve to be happy, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I could digress and go further one way or the other, but I don't want to go too far off course. But I find it quite worrying, though, that when the old generation haven't learnt their lessons and then they impart that unhealed wisdom onto other people, it creates it, almost like a pattern of abuse where humanity is incredibly toxic. And it's toxic because every generation doesn't learn. You have some beautiful people in the world, you know, you have people who don't pass down some incredible wisdom and their bloodline is probably prosperous. We also get some incredibly toxic bloodlines and all they do is, turn, is abuse, you know, they'll just pass on abuse, abuse, abuse. 
so all they do is the, the, the next generation treat their children the same way they would they were treated and it would go for adulthood and then they will go and repeat the cycle so the generations don't change so would you class those elders as in and en, enlightened and insightful no they didn't evolve they didn't learn they just completely repeated the cycle so i think that's why that's why i get frustrated we should all be learning in this lifetime and then we can maybe impart some incredible wisdom onto our children i'm quite fortunate that my daughter listens and she makes her own decisions too and she's only 14 but she's incredibly smart now she's always been very insightful anyway but yeah i, I witness her and i have no doubt for her future i don't even worry about her one bit she gets it she gets it and she's um yeah very smart for her age emotionally mature and at 14 i have no worries about her future at all she sees life in a beautiful way she isn't vulnerable. She isn't naive. Um, she still has a whimsical, fun charm. So she understands the realities of this world. We've both been through an awful lot of trauma. And she understands that. But she also allows herself the freedom to be happy too. And not take life so seriously sometimes. And align herself with people that make her happy. Laugh and smile. She's not interested in being popular she's not interested in being someone she's not to fit in with others she's herself and she'll find her crowd and she does it, you have less friends because you know you're looking for very specific friends but when you get those it's just a beautiful because you can be yourself and that's what she does and like i say i feel like i've done my job with her at 14 she's incredible and she'll only go learning from here you know but i don't know i don't think many people have positive role models to be honest you just pass down some sort of doctrine and you have to follow that others or you are um, not good enough. And that's quite sad. But anyway, I just think that was quite worth saying, really, because I think there's going to be a lot of people who have been through things younger who can speak on topics that a lot of people could learn from. And it's not always making assumptions, you know, that they're not good enough to speak up and probably could learn a thing or two from them.